Today we're going to be discussing the kinetic theory of matter and basically the idea behind that is that no matter what state of matter you have, molecules are constantly in a random state of motion. Um, there is a point, and your author, author of your book does not mention this, if the temperature gets cold enough, um, it gets all the way down to what's called absolute zero, it is at that point that molecules will actually stop moving. Um, we have not been able to attain absolute zero in the lab at all. Um, so for all practical purposes, um, anytime that you have molecules, they are going to be moving, um, whether they're moving very quickly or whether they're moving very slowly. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to try to summarize um, phase changes and um, different phases of matter and molecular motion all into one big diagram. So hopefully that one big summary will help you to put everything together and make a little bit more sense. So we're going to start out with a solid state of matter. And in a solid state of matter, um, your molecules are very, very organized. They're all lined up. Um, they're all nestled together in a very neat, organized fashion. And in that particular state, uh, they're not doing a whole lot of moving. They may be doing some vibration. Um, they're not sliding past each other. Uh, they're just kind of jiggling uh, one direction and another direction. So here, the molecular motion really just looks more like vibration. And in a solid, your molecules are very, very organized, okay? Now, when you get up to a liquid state, your molecules aren't quite as organized anymore, and now they have a little bit more freedom to move around. And so they're going to move, they're going to slide past each other, and so things are a little bit more random than they were now when they were in their solid form. So here, um, they are moving, and they are moving, relatively speaking, at a low speed. Even though it may look like in your glass of water that's sitting on the table that that water is completely motionless, in reality, the molecules are actually moving around quite a bit. And you will get to see this in one of the labs that you're going to, going to do. So in order to go um, from a liquid to a solid, I have to basically take away heat or I have to cool it down and that is called freezing. Now, if I want to go from a solid to a liquid, I have to add heat, and that is classified as melting, okay? So there's those two phases. Then, if you want to get up finally to your last phase, you have a gas, and gases um, really don't stay in a container very well unless you have a lid on them. They move at a very, very high rate of speed. And basically, gases look quite like chaos when they're moving around. Um, they're bouncing off the walls of whatever container they are in. They're moving all over the place. They're running into each other. And so um, when you have a gas, that's going to be, again, highly chaotic. So if I want to go from a liquid to a gas, I have to add heat, and that phase change is called vaporizing. And then if I want to go from a gas back down to a liquid, that is called condensing. Okay, so there we've got basically four phase changes. You've got the different um, types of motion that you're gonna see in the different phases. So now let's put this all together in a phase change chart that he actually shows you in your book. Now, in this type of diagram, you have the temperature on the y-axis, and then um, you've got heat that's added down on the x-axis, okay? And typically, a phase change diagram looks like this. So you're going to start out here Temperature's gonna rise, it's gonna rise, it's gonna rise. And at this particular point in the diagram, you have a solid state. So you can think about an ice cube, you can think about a hunk of metal, you can think about whatever kind of uh, pure solid you would like to think about. At some point, that solid starts to melt. 
And so what happens is that the temperature starts to, to, it levels off. It doesn't matter how much more heat I add until all of that solid turns into a liquid, the temperature will not go up anymore. It stays right at that melting point until all of the solid has turned into a liquid. So right here is where your melting point is. And that's what's happening at this particular point of the diagram is that everything is melting. So if it's an ice cube sitting on the table, it sits there and it doesn't get any um, warmer until all of it has turned into a liquid. Once it is all gone through the phase change and it's all a liquid now, then you can start adding heat and adding heat and adding heat and the temperature of the liquid will continue to rise until it gets to the boiling point and then the temperature is going to basically even out again and it's going to hold still at one particular point until all of the liquid has become a gas and at that point you can get the temperature to go up one more time. So if you have a pot of water on the stove, um, my husband used to tease me when we first got married because I'd put a pot of water on the stove and I'd turn it up as high as it would go because I was always in a hurry to get dinner finished. And so he's like, Michelle, it doesn't make any difference how high you turn that. You can't get the water to boil at a higher temperature than what the boiling point is. And I knew that already. I mean, I'm a chemistry guy. I'm a chemistry person. So yeah, I knew that that was happening. I just wanted to get it to the boiling point um, faster than it was before. But no matter how hard you boil it, the temperature of the water will never get any higher than whatever the boiling point is. So for water, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So the water in that pot's never gonna get any higher than 100 degrees Celsius. So you can turn the heat higher and make it boil faster, but you can't raise the temperature of a boiling liquid any higher until you get it into a gas and then you can make the temperature of the gas go up, okay? So this is your um, diagram, of a, of a phase, diagram of a phase change as far as temperature goes. And so what you need to keep in mind is that during a phase change, the temperatures will not change at all. They will stay the same until the phase has completely changed and then in the new phase, the temperature will start to rise again. Um, he also makes um, the comment that masses are additive while volumes are not. And I wanted to give you another example to help you visualize this. He specifically mentions that if you have alcohol and water that you're dumping together, that if you have 50 milliliters of water and you have 50 milliliters of alcohol, and if you dump them together, it won't make 100 milliliters. Now, the mass will be the same if you weigh those on your balance and, and determine the mass of them. However many grams they were before will still be that many grams afterwards because you recall we have the law of conservation of mass. You can't destroy matter, you can't create matter. So just dumping them together, you're still gonna have the same amount of mass, but volumes are not necessarily additive. And he doesn't really go into this, but the reason that water and alcohol will come up with a smaller volume than what they had, remember we talked about polarity and you remember that in a water molecule, one end is partially positive and one end is partially negative. Well, the same thing happens in alcohol. Alcohol is polar, one end is partially positive and one end is partially negative. So when you dump them together, they manage to arrange themselves in a way so that those positive and negative ends are more lined up with each other and it actually will decrease the volume. A better way to visualize this in your head is if you have a uh, say maybe a jar that's about half full of marbles and then you have another jar and you have it about half full of water. Well, if you dump them together, you're not going to have a full jar of water and marbles because the water, when you dump it on top of your marbles, is going to go down in between all of the spaces in your marbles and so it's not going to be a full jar. If you had a half a jar of water and a half a jar of water and you dump them together, you then have a full jar of water. But if you have a half a jar of marbles and a half a jar of water and you dump them together, the jar is not going to be all the way full to the top uh, just simply because the water is going to fill in the spaces that the marbles have left in between. And you can think of the same type of thing as happening when you dump um, alcohol and when you dump water together. Um, they kind of fill in the empty spaces because of the polarity that's in those molecules. 
Um, even oil and water, even though that they, they do repel each other, you might think that those volumes would be additive, but even those to a certain extent, even though they're on top of each other, um, the, the one will kind of shove the other one down just a little bit. And so even those volumes are not totally additive. They're a whole lot closer than alcohol and water or say alcohol and vinegar, but um, the, the, they're not completely additive still and the volume is going to be a little bit less than it was before.